ಚಾರನ್ನ ಪದಮಾಗೆ ಬಾಳ ಭಾಕಾತಿ ಶತಮ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕಂಠ ಟೂ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಒನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಬೈ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಎ ಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಫೌಂಡರ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ಕಾನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ in the picture his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta on the swami prabhat founder acharya of iskon and greatest exponent of krishna consciousness in the modern world <coughs> idam idam bhagavatam bhagavatam nama nama puranam puranam brahma brahma samitam samitam adhitavan ದ್ವಾರಪ ಆದೌ ಪಿತುಪಾಯನಾಚ ಅಹಂ ಇದಂ ಭಾಗವತ ನಾಮ ಪುರಾಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸಮಿತ ಅಧೀತವಾನ್ ದ್ವಾಪರಾದೌ ಪಿತುರ್ದ್ವಾಪಾಯನಾದಹಂ ಇದಂ ದಿಸ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ಭಾಗವತ ನಾಮ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಪುರಾಣ ವೈದಿಕ್ ಸಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸಮಿತ ಅಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ದಿ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೈದರ್ಸ್ 
Adhitavan, studied. Dvarapa, Adao, at the end of the Dvarapa Yuga. Pituhu, from my father. Dvaipayanat, Dvaipayana Vyasadev. Dvaipayanat. You're all studying Sanskrit here? Ah. So what does that literally mean? Hmm? It means his pituhu from my father. Dvaipayanat means from my father, literally. But for most uh, English speakers it doesn't matter. So here the translation is given Dvaipayana Vyasadev. Hmm. Dvaipayana, that's it. That's his name. Vyas, we refer to Vyas. He's one Vyas. There are so many Vyasas. So this particular one is called Dvaipayana Vyas. Because there's our god brother in Australia, right? Dvaipayana. Who's, who's born on a. D yeah. Uh, that's uh, Australian for you. Dvaipayana, born on a dvipa. Hmm? Aham, myself. Here myself refers to, well, you can guess, Pituhu Dvaipayana. It refers to Shukdev. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The, st the statement by, made by Srila Shukdev Goswami that the topmost transcendental. Could we please move this now? The statement made by Srila Shukdev Goswami that the topmost transcendentalist who is beyond the jurisdiction of regulations and restrictions mainly takes to the task of hearing about and glorifying the personality of Godhead is verified by his personal example. So, who is listening very carefully to what I just read? The statement made by Srila Shukadev Goswami that the topmost transcendentalist who is beyond the jurisdiction of regulations and restrictions mainly takes to the task of hearing about and glorified the, glorifying the personality of Godhead is verified by his personal example. What does this refer to? First to a famous verse that's just been... Uh, famous verse, Atma Ramas. Yeah. Well, it's not actually come up yet, but it, we're leading up to that. Just before that, prayena munayo rajan nivritta vidhi shedataha naigunyasta naigunyasta ramante sma gunanu katanae hare hey. This is this is a prelude to the Atma Rama verse. Just comes in the verse before this. O King Parikshit, mainly the topmost transcendentalists who are above the regulative principles and restrictions take pleasure in describing the glories of the Lord. <clears throat> in, in every, practically in every line of Prabhupada's purports, you can go into it and find some other connection in the base. All, all interconnected, all interrelated. Continuing reading the purport, Shukadev Goswami being a recognized, liberated soul, and the topmost transcendentalist was accepted by all the topmost sages present in the meeting during the last seven days of Maharaj Parikshit. He cites from the example of his life that he himself was attracted by the transcendental activities of the Lord, and he studied Srimad Bhagavatam from his great father, Sri Dvaipayana Vyasadev. Srimad Bhagavatam, or for that matter any other scientific literature, cannot be studied at home by one's own intellectual capacity. Medical books of anatomy or physiology are available in the market, but no one can become a qualified medical practitioner simply by reading such books at home. One has to be admitted to the medical college and study the books under the guidance of learned professors. Similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam, the postgraduate study of the science of Godhead, can only be learned by studying it at the feet of a realized soul like Srila Vyasadeva. Although Shukadeva Goswami was a liberated soul from the very day of his birth, 
He still had to take lessons of Srimad Bhagavatam from his great father Vyasadeva, who compiled the Srimad Bhagavatam under the instruction of another great soul, Sri Narada Muni. Lord Sri Taitanya Mahaprabhu instructed a learned Brahmana to study Srimad Bhagavatam from a personal Bhagavata. Srimad Bhagavatam is based on the transcendental name, form, attributes, pastimes, entourage and variegatedness of the Supreme Person. And it is spoken by the incarnation of the Personality of Godhead, Srila Vyasadeva. Pastimes of the Lord are executed in cooperation with His pure devotees and consequently historical incidences are mentioned in this great literature because they are related to Krishna. It is called Brahma Sangitam because it is the sound representative of Lord Krishna like the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is the sound incarnation of the Lord because it is spoken by the Supreme Lord and Srimad Bhagavatam is the sound representative of the Lord. Because it was spoken by the incarnation of the Lord about the activities of the Lord. As stated in the beginning of this book, it is the essence of the Vedic desire tree and the natural commentation on the Brahma Sutras the topmost philosophical thesis on the subject matter of Brahman. Vyasadeva appeared at the end of the Dwarapa Yuga as the son of Satyavati, and therefore the word Dwaparadao, or the beginning of Dwarapa Yuga in this context, means just prior to the beginning of the Kali Yuga. The logic of this statement, according to Srila Jiva Goswami, is comparable to that of calling the upper portion of the tree the beginning. The root of the tree is the beginning of the tree, but in common knowledge, the upper portion of the tree is first seen. In this way, the end of the tree is accepted as its beginning. <clears throat> Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Takshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shreshtam Nanamapi Shatiputram Atrasurupam Rupam Tasyagratam Hurupurim Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhava Sham Prato Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tam Natosu Mande Ham Shri Guru Shri Atav Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavans Cha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishaka Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Srimad Bhagavatam is unique in the corpus of Vedic literature, within the corpus of Vedic literature, in as much as it uh, is Harikata, beginning, middle, and it's completely focused on uh, <clears throat> Harikata, as stated in a verse which begins the same word, idam bhagavatam nama purana brahma samitam uttama shloka charitam chakara bhagavan rishihi that uh, this Srimad bhagavatam is, is the essence of all the Vedas and uttama shloka charitam it describes in the best verses, he who is described in the best verses the, the pastimes, specifically it's described here the pastimes of Krishna and Chakara Bhagavan Rishihi was uh, compiled by Vyasadev Bhagavan Rishi. Shukdev Goswami is in this section of the Bhagavatam, he is describing the glories of Harikata and the glories of Harikata in his description it merges with the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. The point he's glorifying the Hari Kata and simultaneously comes to glorify Srimad Bhagavatam because Srimad Bhagavatam is 
Harikata par excellence, which is a French term. It means at, at the highest level, used in English also. Mm. <coughs> that uh, Harikata, he's describing how Parinishtito, he, Parinishtito, he nayargunye. He was already fixed in Brahman, in personal realization. But still, he became attracted. He's giving the example of himself that he was fully realized. Prabhupada says from his birth he was realized. Is that correct? He was realized with he was already self realized within the womb, which is why he didn't want didn't want to take birth, right? So is that statement by Prabhupada right that he was self realized from his birth, or does it need correcting? What do you think? From birth, but it was before birth. Well, in English we say from birth, it means when they pop out of the womb. But, but uh, birth means when the semen, semen and ova mix. That's actually the birth, isn't it? I don't know if we're speaking biologically here, but uh, it's just like in, in Indian tradition... The first birthday is the day you're born, which is correct, right? First birthday is the day you're born, not a year after you're born. It's the day you're born, isn't it? So that is, uh, well, that's called Garabishta, situated in the womb, and then there's Bhumishta, which means you, you come out and you come onto the earth. So he was from the very time of his birth, and of course even before that also. But in, as he's known as Shukdev in this Kali Yuga or at the Sandhya of the Dwarpa Yuga and the Kali Yuga, uh, he was self-realized from his very birth. And he heard Srimad Bhagavatam from Vyasadev, who is the compiler of the Bhagavatam, Prabhupada, You'll find in Srila Prabhupada's translations, you must have found that many times, that Srila Prabhupada works some explanation or some purport right into the translation. So Prabhupada in that verse, Mahamani Krite, in the second verse of Bhagavatam states, compiled by Srila Vyasadeva in his maturity. So he adds that. So that's quite within the... Uh, the... Uh, commentarial tradition that's called bhavartha that you give the you give the the meaning and the the feeling and the understanding so that again say again that verse idang bhagavatam nama purana brahma samitam uttama shloka charitam chakara bhagavan rishihi nishraya saya loka syadhanyang swastya mahat can someone give the english translation of that because that's uh, the, the way Prabhupada translates that, it's, it's blissful, blissful translation. The word blissful, it's all blissful, Prabhupada says in the translation. It's you, Prabhupada's own bliss in glorifying Bhagavatam comes through in his translations. This Srimad Bhagavatam, what, how does it go? It's first canto. Same same line at the beginning of the verse as, as Idang Bhagavatam Nama Purana Brahma Samitam and then Uttama Shloka Charitam Chakara Bhagavan Rishihi. Did you get the translation in English? Okay, give it to me. A very blissful translation. This scripture named Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of God. That's how Srila Prabhupada here, you see, <coughs> Brahma Samitam, here in the second canto, Prabhupada's translated that as, uh, <coughs> in the word for word purport, he's translated as, uh, approved as the essence of the Vedas. And in the verse translation, he's translated it as equal to all the Vedas. 
And here in the first canto, he is translated as incarnation of Lord Sri Krishna, literary incarnation of God. This scripture named Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of God, and it is compiled by Srila Vyasadeva, the incarnation of God. It is meant for the ultimate good of all people, and it is all successful, all blissful, and all perfect. So, Nishrayasai Alokasya. It is meant for the ultimate good of all people. It is all successful, all blissful, and all perfect. <clears throat> so what could be better than studying Bhagavatam, which is compiled by Vyasadeva, the, the uh, <laughs> incarnation of God, forgiving the Vedas, in his maturity, after he'd been through, he'd already been through all the shastras, compiling them, giving them out for editing, the Mahabharata, Vedanta Sutras, and ultimately Srimad Bhagavatam. What could be more complete and more perfect than that? Study. So, but Shukadev studied this Srimad Bhagavatam from Vyasadev, and there, there can't be any more perfect, all successful, all blissful, and all perfect than Bhagavatam given by Vyasadev. Can't be anything better than that, can there? It's Krishna in literary form. But yes, there can be something better than that. What is that? What is better than Srimad Bhagavatam given by Vyasadev? It's Krishna himself. It can't be anything better. Well, Krishna is always getting better. <laughs> so, Shukamakad Amrita Drava Samyatam. It became better by Shuka himself explaining it. Isn't that amazing? Vyasadeva, who's the, the, the incarnation of God for presenting all the Vedic knowledge and especially this Bhagavatam is his topmost contribution. And it became better by the touch of Shukadev. And Vyasadeva writes that himself. He's, Vyasadeva is not, uh, he's not ashamed to write that in his own Bhagavad He wrote it and he was sitting and listening to Shukadev. He taught it to Shukadev and afterwards he, he learned it or he sat and listened to Shukadev. So, wow, this is really, Vyasadeva was listening. Yeah, this is really good. I'll have to put that in the... In the in the final form. You have to come back and put it in the final form. So, Bhagavatam from Vyasadeva, that's, the, that's it. That's from Vyasadeva and then from Shukadeva, that's it. That's the final word, right? Isn't that all finished? There's nothing better than that. Now you're expecting another trick question. Here. Well, the Bhagavatam we've received through so many Acharyas who have given their commentaries. And they're all making it different realizations, insights. Uh, <clears throat> just like here, Srila Prabhupada quotes Jiva Goswami. What is the meaning of this? Adhitavan dva parado. It's simple Sanskrit. Dva parado means in the beginning of Dwarpa Yoga. Shukadev said, I said, but, uh, but the chronology is there that it, it was at the end of Dwarapa Yuga. So, how are we to understand this? Well, Srila Prabhupada in the purport gives two understandings of how this can, of the, how this apparent mistake can be understood. Uh, he say, one thing is, Dwarapa Ado. So Ado means there's Dwarapa and Dwarapa Ado. So it's in Dwarapa Yoga, but it's at the beginning of Kali Yoga, which isn't stated here. But it ha and then uh, Jiva Goswami gives the understanding that uh, just like the bottom of a tree is the beginning. So in that way it can be understood. So in this way the Bhagavatam is enriched with the commentaries of the uh, various acharyas. 
Srila <coughs> Prabhupada said that by studying my books, one gets in touch with all the Acharyas. And why is that? Because he himself, he studied the commentaries of the Acharyas before giving his purport. And uh, there's one important Back to Godhead article by Gopi Puranadana Prabhu, in which Gopi Puranadana Prabhu, by studying one purport, he, sh he shows how Srila Prabhupada, uh, how, even though Srila Prabhupada is presenting in very simple language, how he studied the commentaries of the Acharyas and presented the essence of that in simple English language. So Gopi Prandana Prabhu in that article was making the point and showing how uh, Srila Prabhupada, his literary presentations, they were just giving the teachings of the previous Acharyas. And Srila Prabhupada would give his own realizations in accord with that also. And this was the point that Srila Prabhupada made again and again and again, that his authenticity comes from the fact that he's simply presenting what was given by the previous Acharyas. He's following Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. He didn't, in one sense, Srila Prabhupada didn't need to say that because he was teaching in America. In, in the beginning of his movement was in America. And the people in America didn't care what Jiva Goswami said or any such thing. And there were plenty of cheaters who came from India and said, I'm, I'm here to teach you everything. And just they present themselves, but they didn't give their parampara. They, in many cases, they didn't have any parampara. But Prabhupada emphasized that point again and again, that I'm simply teaching as I have heard. And you should also do the same thing. And uh, in India, among those who were somewhat rooted in tradition, of which there were many more in the 1970s than there are now, uh, that, that was also very impressive, that Srila Prabhupada would quote the previous Acharyas, he would quote from Shastra. Even in America, he would quote from Shastra. In America, you don't need to quote from Shastra because no one, no one knows it and no one cares for it, especially in the 1960s when Srila Prabhupada was first there. But Srila Prabhupada was emphasizing that this is, on the, this is the basis on which I am speaking. And this is the basis on which the Krishna Conscious Movement can go forward from here now in America, can go forward on the basis of Guru, Sadhu and Shastra, of which Shastra is the center and the topmost Shastra is Srimad Bhagavatam. <coughs> So Srila Prabhupada said, you should, you should accept what I'm saying on, the, on these grounds. Not that Prabhupada said, you see, I'm a, Prabhupada didn't say, I'm a pure devotee, I'm born in a pure devotee family, and I know, I know so many things, and I, um, I'm a, I came directly from Krishna Leela. Prabhupada didn't make any such claims. He said that you should follow because I am presenting the message as it is. And you should also present it. And in this way, you will be connected with Krishna, with the reality who is presented in Shastra. And that, that was a, uh, a major point of Gopi Prandhan Prabhu. As I'm told, this school is for continuing the tradition of Gopi Prandana Prabhu who made the Bhagavata Vidya Pita at Govardhan <clears throat> and quite a few devotees came through having studied from him. Now w one great feature of Gopi Prandana Prabhu, of course he was uh, very deeply studied in Shastra, very humble, very pure-hearted devotee. Uh, he was uh, 
You see the 26 qualities of a devotee. Near Doge, he was faultless. But one, one very important quality of his, which uh, I request you, the students of this school, to uh, contemplate and to uh, try to imbibe deeply, is that, um, of course, he was very, very learned. And there can be a tendency among devotees who become learned and then they can study the commentaries of the Acharyas. There may be a tendency to think, well, we know better than Prabhupada, or Prabhupada wasn't so great, or other insane ideas like this. But Gopi Prandana Prabhu, he was always very, very faithful at the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada. And he, although he himself was a very great learned scholar in so many ways, uh, he was very humble, which is the real sign of a scholar. Vidyadadati vinayam, gane prayasamuda pasyana manta eva. Well, the, the beginning of getting knowledge is to give up the idea that I will become a great scholar and become humble. And when one has actually learned, the sign is vidyadadati vinayam. One should know that however much you know, uh, you know we're all very small. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so, Gopi Parandana Prabhu within our movement is known as a great scholar, great devotee, but the real confirmation of his great scholarship is that he uh, was firmly fixed at the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada and was very interested in explaining Bhagavatam through the medium of Srila Prabhupada's books. Now, you're studying Sanskrit so you can have what we might call direct access to the writings of the previous Acharyas. <clears throat> there have been translations of the works of the previous Acharyas, Gauri Acharyas, but uh, from what I can see, most of them then, they're not such, there are problems with the translations. And to properly translate is not an easy job, no doubt, because, well, for various reasons. One reason is the difference in language. Another thing is that the commentaries are written for people who have a deep knowledge of, a wide, deep knowledge of Shastra and of the whole culture and tradition. So just to translate might not be enough. Some years ago, maybe you know uh, Radhika Raman Prabhu. He, his PhD, he was telling about his PhD thesis. He'd, he'd done a commentary on of, or he'd studied, his PhD thesis was a, a study of part of the Paramatma Sandarbha of Jiva Goswami. It wasn't, it's published now, it wasn't published at the time. So I said, well, you must have had a lot of footnotes. He said, yeah, it was mostly footnotes. Because at every, practically every word, you need to, ex you need to explain it more. It's condensed, it needs unpacking. And even with the footnote, you could do another sub-commentary, footnotes on the footnotes. And that's how the commentarial tradition goes on. That the commentator, you commentate, the original commentator on Bhagavatam, Sridhar Swami, and then other commentators, they, they build on that. They don't, they, they may explain points that Sridhar Swami has explained, or they may explain some points that he hasn't explained. But they do so in deference to the... Uh, to the original commentator. So, <clears throat> it is a very deep subject matter. And as you study more, that hopefully that should awaken you in you appreciation more and more of how Srila Prabhupada was able to bring these very... Uh, deep and often very uh, uh, subtle teachings 
and present them in a language which is completely not geared for that at all. Uh, and in which the concepts which are being described are, are completely absent. Uh, so that, that should give great appreciation of, of how Srila Prabhupada has uh, conveyed these points to the world, to people with no background in or even interest in these subject matters and brought them to the point because the point of all this deep study is not to become a scholar, the point is to become a devotee of Krishna, not to become a scholar per se. So the, the highest scholarship is to chant Hare Krishna and be happy. <laughs> And studying Shastra, that doesn't mean that Shastra shouldn't be studied, but um, if there's no chanting Hare Krishna and being happy, then it's dry, dry scholarship. We're chanting Hare Krishna, but we also have to understand who is Krishna. We understand Krishna from Bhagavatam. We understand Bhagavatam from the Vaishnav. Acharyas. Uh, otherwise, there are so many, so many uh, people who are describing Krishna. Here in Vrindavan, there are so many speakers on Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada, he, was, he said, you be careful here in Vrindavan, there are so many Mayavadis here. When Srila Prabhupada was present, the most famous speaker on Bhagavatam in Vrindavan, based in Vrindavan, was a big Mayavadi. You know that? I won't say his name. And uh, he, he was opposed to Prabhupada. He said, what are you doing giving these Westerners, making them into, calling them Brahmanas? He was opposed to that. He, uh, he was supposed to be a great exponent of Bhagavatam, but he was a complete Mayavadi. And how is that possible? Why? How is it possible to be a Mayavadi anyway? <laughs> how do you come to that conclusion? So we are, we are studying Bhagavatam uh, and we want to go deeply into that. Srila Prabhupada wanted us he wrote these books, as he often said, not just for distributing, but he wanted his disciples in particular to study them. So I have a question for you. How, considering that Bhagavatam, there's every word, what is that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, that uh, uh, first, uh, Krishna Tulla Bhagavat Bibhu Sarva Shroi Prati Shloke Prati Akare Nana Artha Koi that this Bhagavatam is just like Krishna, all-powerful, can give shelter to all, in every shloka, in every verse, and in every word, in every letter, there are various meanings. So Bhagavatam is so deep, and then if we get into the commentaries, they bring out the depth more and more. So my question is, how great a scholar does one have to be to understand Bhagavatam fully? What's the answer to that question? How, what level of scholarship is required to understand Bhagavatam fully? Any suggestions? Jao Bhagavata Paro Bhagavata Stani. Prabhupada quotes that in this purport. One has to be a scholar by studying from, from a Bhagavat. There are two kinds of Bhagavat. What's that in Chaitanya Charitamrita? Two kinds of Bhagavat. Mm. What's the verse? Mm. Ek Bhagavata Baro Bhagavata Shastra Ar Bhagavat Bhakta Bhakti Rasa Patra. Two kinds of Bhagavat. So the question, how great a scholar does one have to be to understand Bhagavatam fully? What's the answer? The answer is that the question is wrong. 
First thing, you can't understand Bhagavatam fully. <laughs> Another thing is, it's not really a question of scholarship. The answer is, what? Last verse of Shvetashvatar Upanishad. Yasya deve parabhakti yatha deve tatha garau tasyaite katita hyarta prakashante mahatmana. <coughs> All the imports of the Vedic knowledge are revealed to a person who has full faith in Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and in the Guru who teaches about Krishna. So we may say, well, the Mayavadis, they're discussing Bhagavatam. They must be discussing about Krishna. And they do. They discuss about Krishna's pastimes. They're also discussing about Krishna. One experience I had many years ago, I think it was, when was it, 1989 or something like that. At, uh, I, believe was, I believe it was Arda Kumbha Mela at Prayag. I was wandering around in the evening. That's the time when they have the talks, pravachans in the pandals. And when, when Shankaracharya was there, a huge pandal giving a talk. So I was listening. He was going on talking about how Draupadi, only when she raised both hands and called out, so only by full surrender to Krishna. I said, this is very nice. This is very good. He's talking about bhakti. So, so I thought it was very good. And he said, so in the same way, we have to fully surrender. So this is very good. It didn't sound like a Mayavadi. And then he finished his speech by saying that, and we have to understand that we all are Ishvara. <laughs> Jagadat was just about to stand up and punch me on the nose. I didn't say it. He was a Mayavadi. I could have, well, I shouldn't have, I couldn't have even got near him to punch him on the nose, and I don't think Prabhupada would have approved of that. But uh, this is how people are messing it up with their wrong understandings. So we should hear Bhagavatam from Vaishnavas. In this regard, there is a well-known verse from Sanatan Goswami. Ah, what's the first line? A Vaishnava mokhod girnam putam harikatam ritam shravanam naiva kartavya sapo yatha payam Hmm. Now, a Vaishnava, a Vaishnava Mukha Udgirnam, that which is spoken from the mouth of a non Vaishnava. Then, who's a non Vaishnava? Here in Vrindavan, it seems everyone should be a Vaishnava. They're all talking about Krishna. <coughs> There's so many speaking about Krishna or about Rama. So we have to see, we'll judge by the effect, how much people are free from material desires, uh, how much they're giving everything, they're everything for Krishna. This is the test. Krishna te kila cheshta. Krishna te akila cheshta. Everything should be done for Krishna. Nothing for myself. And this was really the essence of what Srila Prabhupada came to teach us, <clears throat> that it's, it's not for me. Prabhupada, he taught Krishna consciousness all over the world. He was giving Krishna. He didn't want anything from anyone. He didn't want anything from anyone. He didn't need anything from anyone because he already had Krishna. So what does he need? But then we see, well, he wanted so many things from his disciples. He wanted them to go all over the world and preach and work hard. But that was for the glorification of Krishna. He didn't want it for himself. At that time in the Western world, there were several Indian gurus who were very famous. Prabhupada wasn't very famous. Hare Krishna was famous. But Prabhupada wasn't famous because he was glorifying Krishna. 
He made Krishna famous. He didn't want to make himself famous. He was doing everything for Krishna. So we are assembled here by the mercy of his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. And we're studying Prabhupada's Bhagavatam and you're studying so that you can study the commentaries of the previous Acharyas, but I, I would request all of you to be very firmly fixed. Uh, as Gopi Parandana Prabhu was very firmly fixed, while studying so many things, he was very firmly grounded in Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada's teachings and studying uh, Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavatam. We can say, well, it's not Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavatam, it's Vyasadeva's Bhagavatam. Yeah, that's true, but it's also Prabhupada's Bhagavatam. It's, it's, it's as he has presented, as inspired by Krishna, as Srila Prabhupada has presented Bhagavatam to the world. And of course, it's not all over. Just like with Vyasadeva, he presented Bhagavatam, and you can say, well, that's the ultimate. It's for the ultimate good of all people, Nishrayasaya. <clears throat> but then there's more good. Shukadeva gave more good, and then the different Acharyas gave more, and Prabhupada gave his commentary. So it's not all over. The, the teaching of Bhagavatam should go on. <clears throat> Prabhupada wanted that his disciples have daily classes on Bhagavatam to present the subject matter in their own words from different angles of vision, but based on how Srila Prabhupada has presented the Bhagavatam. <clears throat> and Srila Prabhupada's presentation of Bhagavatam has an added dimension that is not prominent not so prominent in the writings of the previous Acharyas. Srila Prabhupada's commentary on Bhagavatam and on, on all, all his writings, they are very much in the mood of bringing Krishna consciousness to the world. Srila Prabhupada's manifesto, you could say, for his worldwide Krishna consciousness preaching is based on the verse which he quoted at the end of the preface in, uh, to Bhagavatam. The Tadvag Visargo Janataga Viplavo Yasmin Prati Shlokam Abhadavyatyapi Namanyan Antasya Yashonkitani Yadchrinvanti Gayanti Grinanti Sadavaha. This is uh, very, yeah, so the translation of this verse. Uh, on the other hand, Srila Prabhupada begins his English translation of this, on the other hand, because this verse is spoken in relation to the previous verse, which describes the Vyasam Tirtha, the pilgrimage place for crows, which means literature which doesn't glorify Krishna. And actually, what's being referred to there? The Times of India... What's being referred to? The Times of India, writings of, of uh, Kushwan Singh. What's being referred to there? It's being ref what's being referred to is even Shastra that doesn't directly glorify Krishna. It's all in the category of, of uh, Kaitava Dharma. In the beginning, that's, that's, uh, that is rejected. Atra, here in Srimad Bhagavatam, the word Atra comes here three times, comes in the second verse of Bhagavatam. This is the Vedyam Vastavam, Atra Vastu. This is the real teachings of the Veda. So all that other stuff which came before, if you're attracted to all of that, that is like being a crow attracted to the garbage. So in contrast to that, on the other hand, that literature which wholly and solely glorifies the names, forms, qualities and pastimes of the unlimited Supreme Lord is a different kind of creation, Visarga, different creation, and it's meant for creating a revolution in the lives of the, the misguided lives of a sinful population. 
Even if it is imperfectly composed, it is heard, sung and accepted by purified men who are fully honest. So some points here that <coughs> Bhagavatam was always spoken among pious people. Here in Vrindavan, who comes to all these Bhagavat Katas, who comes to listen? It's all pious people, right? You don't get the drunkards and and even nowadays you don't know because so many people in India are eating meat even some of them might be meat eaters but at least when they come to Vrindavan and hear Bhagavatam they won't be eating meat you don't know otherwise because India is becoming such they're meataholics <laughs> it's what happened to India and they're fighting with the Muslims I don't know why why don't they just get together and eat meat together because what well, you know what's the What's the big difference nowadays? Gar se kaho ham Hindu hai. That's all. Hindu stands in the bad. So, so this uh, Bhagavatam was never spoken previously among sinful people. Prabhupada brought the Bhagavatam among the sinful people and is meant for creating a revolution in their life. That's Prabhupada. The Vyasadeva is seeing Prabhupada. Otherwise, how can you explain it? Must be. And then, even if imperfectly composed, who's, who spoke this word? Narad spoke to Vyasadeva. So, Vyasadeva, he is the literary incarnation of God. And whatever he writes, we have to accept as perfect. Now, there may be some things like Dwaparado, which doesn't seem to make sense. But that should be accepted, even if there seems to be some imperfect imperfection in the composition. It would have been very easy to write Dwaparante, some reason. He wrote Dwaparato, and that's explained by Jiva Goswami. But this imperfectly composed, that was very much relevant to Srila Prabhupada's presenting the Bhagavatam in English, because anyway in English, it's not possible to present the, at least from my understanding, I haven't studied Sanskrit, but I know Bengali at a literary level, which is derived from Sanskrit. And the language is just not, it's, it's not a good medium for, for presenting the Vedic teachings. Sanskrit is. English isn't. So the very attempt to present it in English is going to be problematic. And on top of that, Srila Prabhupada's English itself is uh, non-standard English. But Srila Prabhupada said, not with, and Prabhupada gave the example in, in the purport of this verse, Tadbhag Visargo, that it's just like if the house is on fire, then say there are foreigners living in a country and the house is on fire. Somehow they manage to communicate to others that we need some help. So in the same way, the whole world is on fire. Samsara, dava, nala. And Prabhupada wanted to convey the message of Bhagavatam. So he did that. He, con he conveyed that. So the, the, in, in Srila Prabhupada's commentaries on Bhagavatam, we find... Unlike previous acharyas, or to a, to a degree much more than previous acharyas, very strongly the mood of w preaching Krishna consciousness, uplifting others. It's there in Bhagavatam. Prayena deva mune asvavi mukti kama monam charandi vijane naparata mishta. What's the next line? Ah, chocheta tovi mukhacheta sa indriyata maya sukhaya baramudvaha tovi murha. Prahlad Maharaj says that most of the munis 
Oh, Prayana, they owe oh, Narsinghari. Most of the Munis, they, they're simply interested. They go off to the Himalayas for their own spiritual uplift, but they're not interested in uplifting others. But as far as I'm concerned, I am lamenting at the fate of those who are... Oh, I'm getting mixed up there. That's uh, Yeah, yeah, I'm getting mixed up with the... Uh, the, the verse. How does that other verse begin? Yeah. So uh, I'm very happy uh, chanting your names and remembering you, but uh, what about all these foolish rascals who, who are suffering in material life? And I'm thinking of how to uplift them. So Srila Prabhupada is very much in the mood of Prahlad. I first time in... I, I came to Vrindavan in 1976. Srila Prabhupada was speaking on that section of Bhagavatam, the seventh canto. And it was all very exciting and new for us in those days because we didn't have the seventh canto of Bhagavatam printed. When you join, you have the whole Bhagavatam. But it was just coming out volume by volume. So Prabhupada was speaking on that section and several of the devotees noted that Prabhupada, he, had be in, he became absorbed in the mood of of Prahlad Maharaj, the mood of wanting to uplift the fallen soul. So that that's very that that's central to Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavatam commentary and his teachings and and everything about him. That he lived in Vrindavan and he left Vrindavan having compiled the and printed his commentary on the first canto of Bhagavatam in three volumes. And then he went to the Western countries. So when studying Bhagavatam here, be firmly grounded in Srila Prabhupada's presentation of Bhagavatam and his mood in doing so. That mood is of absorbing those teachings for the sake of communicating them to others. Now it is possible to become some kind of a, a scholar and even if you see the previous Acharya's commentaries, especially Visvara Chagvara Thakur's commentaries in many, they're very, very beautiful and Prabhupada actually wanted an elaborate commentary on the 10th canto with Visvara Chagvara Thakur's commentaries but it's possible to get lost, so to speak, in the commentaries of the previous Acharyas. But always see through the eyes of Srila Prabhupada. Our, our, our way to approach the previous Acharyas is via the Parampara system, especially going through Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada himself warned his disciples that you won't find Krishna loitering in Loi Bazaar. Or you you won't find him you you won't find him in a bush in Vrindavan. Where do we find him? We find him in service to his mission, to Krishna's mission. And Krishna's mission at the present time is Jare Deko Tare Koha Krishna Upadesh Amaragyai Guru Hoya Taro E Desh. Living in Vrindavan, you might think, well, everyone's already Krishna conscious, but no, Delhi's just up the road. <laughs> and Vrindavan, there, uh, I hope you don't get to, well, maybe you will. There, there are so many. One thing you'll find if you spend time in any, in any holy place, there are many unholy things going on in the holy places. Just uh, uh, Krishna, he was living in Vrindavan and he attracted all the demons to come. So it's like that. In the holy places, so many demons are attracted to come. And apart from that, the, the, the whole world is going to hell. They're, they're, everyone's scared now. Coronavirus. Oh, we're going to die. Anyway, they're going to die. The real problem is whether they die of coronavirus or 
Delhi pollution or whatever they die of, without becoming Krishna conscious, they're just losing, losing the opportunity, wasting their life. So study is for the sake of becoming fixed in the knowledge for serving in Srila Prabhupada's mission. See what, what, uh, what role we have to play in Srila Prabhupada's mission. <clears throat> Otherwise, you'll see uh, so many people going to come to Vrindavan, Radhe, Radhe, and then they'll go back to Delhi and turn on the TV or... Uh, and even the, 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 in their cell phone they have the pornographic movies and who knows what. Yeah. Really, really, it, it's, very, it's very bad times, very bad times. Who is that? They was telling me this morning, Rasanand, did he go? I think he went back. He told me that in... Uh, in what is that called? Murgi Mandi. In Delhi there's Murgi Mandi, the chicken market, I guess you could translate that. But it's not just they're not selling just chickens there, all kinds of meat. And uh, six hundred trucks of of meat come in every day, except during Navaratri, when only sixty come in, because the pious Hindus don't eat meat during Navaratri. That means 540 trucks are for the Hindus and only 60 for the Muslims. Right? Very bad situation. We have to get out to the people. And otherwise, you go in Delhi and do Harinam in most of the places, people will like it. That some piety is there, no doubt. And many people with some association, they'll take up chanting, they'll chant 16 rounds somehow or other on the way to work or hopefully. Uh, they're not so fortunate as you as to have the opportunity to sit in Vrindavan and study. They have to work hard to make a living. It's tough when you're trying to work when the yeah it's tough it's hard when you're trying to trying to have a job and but the the boss at your office they what they want from you is sarvadhaman paritya mame kam sharanam raja that's what they want you should only eat and sleep to get enough energy to work one of my disciples told me that. He was working in, uh, in Chennai and the, the boss at the office told him, look, we have showers here, we have beds, we'll bring you food. You don't need to go anywhere. You just stay here. When you're tired, you sleep. We'll bring you food and the rest of the time you work. And he was serious. So it's very, in this atmosphere, it's, it's very hard to have the time to be Krishna conscious, but still many people, they like to take it up. And they will become vegetarians. At least vegetarians. They might not strictly offer everything to Krishna, but, but many people like to take up bhakti. That piety is there. So there is an opportunity for preaching Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, the situation is very bad in the whole world. In, in India, if it's so bad, we can't imagine how bad it is elsewhere. So that is what I wanted to communicate to all of you. You study Bhagavatam, but specifically in the line of Srila Prabhupada. Don't get into some dreamland of being some Baba wandering here and there. You study so that you can serve Prabhupada's mission. So any question, please.
Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, many, many thanks to for enlightening us. Maharaj, uh, as you said that Srila Prabhupada's mood was in his purports, he generally in the preaching mood, uplifting how the Th- That from. mood is very prominent, isn't it? Yeah, how exactly. He, he really, you, can, you can feel how Prabhupada wants to communicate that. Yes. How everyone should surrender to Krishna. Yes. At the same time, as you may remembered His Grace Gopi Pranadhan Prabhu, the way he was uh, in the formally fixed in his uh, mm-hmm. path. And uh, so my question is, Maharaj, uh, here in this institute we study Srimad Bhagavatam through different commentaries mm-hmm. and we want to know the detail of Srimad Bhagavatam and we want to get observed. Now, in this present scenario, like 2020, how this study will help to preach to the outside world. How will the studies be helpful for preaching to the outside world? It's a specialized, this is for specialized uh, work. Specialized work is required also. If you're going to the outside world, you don't need to, you don't need a deep background. But then when you go out to preach, so many challenges will come. And uh, just like for instance, it's not an, someone, someone uh, you're preaching to people and they're reading Prabhupada's books and have faith in Prabhupada's books and then someone comes along from Vrindavan maybe, who's deeply learned and says, well Prabhupada says this, but it's wrong. And he gives so many Shastra quotes to show how it's wrong. And then someone has to be there to get so many Shastri quotes to show how he's wrong and Prabhupada is right. So that is required also. There's also, it's, it's, uh, it's a very nice thing to do also. And it's, it's very nice to study the commentaries of the previous Acharyas. It's a very lucky opportunity to have that. Maharaj, in the purport, what the verse uh, today we read, in that purport, Prabhupada has written that uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told a particular Brahmana to... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told a particular Brahmana. It's actually Srirup Damada told oh. the Brahmana. That's that verse that was quoted, Jao Bhagavata Paro Vaishnavarasthana. But that's uh, Srirup Damada, he's the, uh, what's the word used? He's the, he's the Dvitiya Swarup of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's non, in many ways he's non-different from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's Lalita, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in Radha Bhav. So, Shrugar Shai Bhagya Najai Barnan Prabhura Vishtata Bhaka Kaimon. He's completely non different. He's absorbed in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when he said Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's Shrub Dhamada, it's the same thing. It's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings that the Bhagavatam should be learned from a Bhagavata, a pure devotee. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much Maharaj for giving us a uh, proper vision how to approach Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, one of my questions is Maharaj, in this uh, sloka idam bhagavatam nama puranam brahma sahitam. So, in the translation it is written ki uh, this Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation and it is meant to give ultimate good to all people. So, how... That's people... in, the, uh, in the first canto yes. rendition. Yeah. Yes. You just quote this sloka. Hmm. So, uh, how some people, those who are approaching Srimad Bhagavatam and giving talk on Srimad Bhagavatam, learning Srimad Bhagavatam, still they are getting, becoming Mayavadi? Why? They... No, it's not that they study Bhagavatam and become Mayavadis. They are Mayavadis and they study Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> it's round the other way. They start off with a misunderstanding and they apply that to Shastra. They, they're on a wrong footing from the very start. 
But that is, uh, uh, it is quite possible to study Bhagavatam, and if you're in that consciousness, Gita also, and come up with some impersonal idea. If you have that preconception, you could, just like bhaktya mama vijanati yavanyas chasmi tattvata tato mang tattvato gyadva vishate tadanantaram. So you could take vishate tadana, you enter into that unlimited, if you have that idea, you do bhakti and then you enter into the unlimited impersonal. You could be taken like that. Tadanantaram can be taken to mean after. After that, there are so many. The the, the, first, the from chapter two to to uh, chapter six. The, 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 uh, it's, uh, what is that? Uh, there are so many things. Gyanagdi dagda karmanam tamahu panditam buddha nahi sadrisham gyanena. What's the next? Nahi sadrisham gyane ihavidya. Pavitra meha vidyate. There's nothing better than jnana. Jnani tvatmaiva me matam. So you can take it to, in an impersonal way. Also. Ultimately you need kripa. Brahmanda brahmite kono bhagyavan jiv guru krishna prasade pai bhakti lata bij. It becomes clear and obvious. It's obvious to us because we're fortunate. But that pride of the Mayavadis, yeah, 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 bhakti, yeah, yeah, that, okay, that's good. You do bhakti, but we, we, we know that the real thing is to become yeah. God. Yeah. Mm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, and some devotees had given class, and uh, they had very learned devotees, much more learned than me. And there was no purport. You are learned. There was, there was no, you, no, I'm not at you, all learned. You are learned because you have dedicated your life to Krishna's service. That's, That's the correct. proof. That's correct. Thank you, Master. Right. They were, there was no purport to some slokas. Mm. And they began to give a purport where there was no purport. Mm. And they did not quote from a previous acharya they had introduced some ideas of their own. And I immediately objected and said, stop. Don't do it. I said, if Prabhupada didn't give the purport, if the acharya did not, uh, previous acharyas did not give, you don't give. Mm. Don't try to speak more. Only repeat what has been spoken by the previous acharyas or by your guru by Prabhupada. Don't give more. Your learning is for repeating. And uh, so I told them that they shouldn't do it. And some devotees doubted me that we're, we are learning Sanskrit, we are research, we will find some new things. And I said, no you will not find some new things. No, don't do it. <laughs> but they doubted me. They're doubting me. They think that I'm being too much, uh, you know, I'm, because I'm an ignorant person, I'm not a learned scholar, I don't know Sanskrit. They're very learned. They can give more and more explanations, more and more like this. I said, then write your own books. Yeah. But don't sit on that seat. Mm. That seat is for simply the representative. Re 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 representing Prabhupada, yeah. You should just so be... That, that's a good solution which Prabhupada gave. You can write your own books. But don't sit on my guru's yeah. seat yeah. and say you're speaking, the, representing yeah. my guru. You're not. Because uh, Bhagavatam is unlimited. Yes. So there may be, there may be things to say. Which, there may be, but if my yeah. guru didn't say it, yeah. 
So you can. If you Sri Dhar Maharaj didn't say it, and you speak, you think you can speak more than Sri, then you're a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says. Shamina Manale, what is that? Tare Vesha Madde Gorana Kari. We should not try to supersede, you know, go beyond. Yeah. We should simply. That's there in Chaitanya Charitamrita. That isn't is it? said, yeah. that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, I'm not so expert. That Vallabhacharya, he said that, Chait that uh, Shridha Swami, he's inconsistent. He doesn't explain properly in some place. I'll explain it properly. Chait <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't like that. No. Well, he wouldn't listen to it. He, yeah, he wouldn't listen to it at all. That's Shut up. Gosh. Yeah. Shut up. We don't want to hear it. But interestingly, Prabhupada, in the beginning of Bhagavatam, in the introduction, he said that uh, Devotees can be greatly benefit by going through the commentaries of previous history. He lists so many acharyas, including Vallabh's commentary. Interesting, huh? In which Vallabh, he also criticizes... Vallabh but... Yeah. Then, yeah. And Prabhupada accepted it as a bona fide sampradaya. And when that question came up, then uh, Sumati Muraji, who was so favorable to Prabhupada, became... She liked it, yeah. But, but then when this question came up, that Prabhupada had been quoted in Bhakti Godhead as... as um, he quoted Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as saying, saying this about Vallabhacharya. She became very disturbed and they, the, the, all the, uh, the whole Vallabh Sampradaya became very disturbed. And Prabhupada, he, he, didn't, uh, he didn't backtrack and say that, no, actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't mean this, but he explained, he said, they're like two friends and they have a disagreement, yeah. um, and this and that. But that attitude, that is recorded in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had so many pastimes, not all of them got in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, but Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami included that. It's an important instruction. So, uh, when uh, when some devotee did this, I I requested, I requested the leaning devotees here to uh, censor them. <laughs> Don't allow it. And I'm very uh, happy to say they agreed. They agreed, and they encouraged devotees to simply speak from Prabhupada's books. Good. So in this uh, Bhagavad Mahavidyalaya, the stress is always on Prabhupada. Yeah, good. That's all. Thank you, Jagadat Prabhu. Any questions? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, as you spoke, uh, <clears throat> that studying scriptures uh, and Bhagavatam is most important. Uh, it is kind of compulsory. So... Uh, my question is: Some devotees, they don't studying have scripture in front. Yeah, yeah. But some the, the, the attitude with which we do it is, yeah. is important uh, also. Yeah. Uh, so, Maharaj, uh, some devotees they don't have much interest into studying shastras, mm. so mm. they can engage in different kind of uh, services. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Bhagavatam is the easiest way to understand Krishna and attain Krishna. Like whenever we read Bhagavatam, we associate in the indirectly to Krishna. So how about like uh, if somebody is not studying Shastras with that interest and if he wants to engage in different way? So Yeah, there are so many things. You, you can do so many services. You can cook for Krishna, you can make garlands, you can, can grow flowers for Krishna. So many things can be done. The, the, the essence is the attitude of, of uh, Krishnarte Akela Cheshta. My life, everything is meant for Krishna. That's the essence. If you have that, that's everything. As Srila Prabhupada often pointed out, the gopis, they were not great Vedic scholars. They are great Vedic scholars when they come as the six Goswamis, but as gopis in Vrindavan, they're not. 
It's just a matter of keeping a proper perspective, that's all. Hare Krishna. So we wish to sincerely thank His Holiness Srila Bhakti Kaswami Maharaj for coming here at Bhagavat Mahavidyalaya for encouraging students and also for all encouraging devotees who are staying in Vrindavan. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> if I was 20 years old, I might join you, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so just like Krishna, he, yeah, he comes to this material world and he has a mission. Mission is to attract the conditioned souls towards him. Similarly, the sadhus, they also have a business. Their business, their mission is the same as Krishna's mission. So Maharaj, for the last so many years, thousands, so many decades, Maharaj has been traveling across the globe and encouraging thousands and thousands and thousands of devotees to come close to Krishna. I like to just say one particular thing, one particular incident. <coughs> there is a huge amount of preaching right now going in Burma. And uh, long, long years. Did you go there? I am invited to go there. Uh -huh. But Shivas Pandit Prabhu is a devotee who has been preaching there exclusively. So, the seed of devotional service, the seed of uh, the movement was planted by His Holiness Bhakti Rikas Swami Maharaj in Burma. They, they, they got an invitation, they got a request for some books and then... What happened, uh, Srivas's father, who was later initiated and he's died now, he was overseas and he got a Back to Godhead magazine. And in the Back to Goddess magazine, it said, if, you, if you're interested, we'll send you a free book. So when, his, when Srivas's father got back to Burma, he gave that to his son, who was at university at the time. And his son sent the form to Los Angeles and said, I want a free book. So somehow or other, there was no preaching in Burma at the time, but Prabhavishnu Swami was in that area. I don't think it was even designated as a GBC zone at the time because at that time our movement was so in such a beginning stage. There was no one no one went to Burma, no one was thinking of going there. But it was next to Bangladesh and Pravishtu Swami in Bang. So this this form saying so and so I'd like a free book was um, the devotees in Los Angeles got it to Prabhupada Swami and said, maybe you could send someone there and get the book because if we send the book by post, it probably won't reach. So then Prabhupada Swami asked me to go to Burma and bring a book, find this person and get a book to him. So I, I could only get a 24-hour visa in those days. So I got a 24-hour visa. I found him and gave him the book. <laughs> And then he read it, and then I used to go again and again to Burma and preach to I used to go to different places and I'd preach to him and this and that. And then he took it up seriously, and he's done very well spreading Krishna consciousness there. Maharaj, we sincerely beg at your lotus feet that please bless us, please pray for us, that this endeavor of ours can, can please the... Previous Acharyas, Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, 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 that's it. Without that, it's all offering ghee into ashes. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for coming. Hare Krishna. Thank you for Maharaj. doing this.